The greatest virtue is to follow Tao and Tao alone. The Tao is elusive and intangible. Oh, it is intangible and elusive, and yet within is image. Oh, it is dim and dark, and yet within is essence. This essence is very real, and therein lies faith. From the very beginning until now, its name has never been forgotten. Thus, I perceive the creation. How do I know the ways of creation? Because of this. Yield and overcome. Bend and be straight. Empty and be full. Wear out and be new. Have little and gain. Have much and be confused. Therefore, the wise embrace the one and set an example to all, not putting on a display, they shine forth, not justifying themselves, they are distinguished not boasting, they receive recognition. Not bragging, they never falter. They do not quarrel, so no one quarrels with them. Therefore the ancients say, yield and overcome. Is that an empty saying? Be really whole and all things will come to you. To talk little is natural. High winds do not last all morning. Heavy rain 
does not last all day. Why is this? Heaven and Earth. If heaven and earth cannot make things eternal, how is it possible for man, one who follows the Tao, is at one with the Tao, one who is virtuous, experiences virtue. One who loses the way is lost. When you are one with the Tao, the Tao welcomes you. When you are not at one with virtue, the virtue is always there. When you are at one with loss, the loss is experienced willingly. One who does not trust enough will not be trusted. One who stands on tiptoe is not steady. One who strides cannot maintain the pace. One who makes a show is not enlightened. One who is self-righteous is not respected. One who boasts achieves nothing. One who brags will not endure. According to followers of the Tao, these are extra food and unnecessary luggage. They do not bring happiness. Therefore, followers of the Tao avoid them. Something mysteriously formed, born before heaven and earth, in the silence and the void, standing alone and unchanging, ever present and in motion. 
Perhaps it is the mother of the 10,000 things. I do not know its name. Call it Tao. For lack of a better word, I call it great. Being great, it flows. It flows far away. Having gone far, it returns. Therefore, Tao is great. Heaven is great. Earth is great. The king is also great. These are the four great powers of the universe, and the king is one of them. Man follows the earth. Earth follows heaven. Heaven follows the Tao. Tao follows what is natural. The heavy is the root of the light. The still is the master of unrest. Therefore the sage traveling all day does not lose sight of their baggage. Though there are beautiful things to be seen, they remain unattached and calm. Why should the Lord of 10,000 chariots act lightly in public? To be light is to lose one's root. To be restless is to lose one's control. A good walker leaves no tracks, a good speaker makes no slips, a good reckoner needs no tally. A good door needs no lock, yet no one can open it. Good binding requires no knots, yet no one can loosen it. 
Therefore the sage takes care of all and abandons no one. They take care of all things and abandon nothing. This is called following the light. What is a good person? A teacher of a bad person. What is a bad person? A good person's charge. If the teacher is not respected and the student not cared for, confusion will arise however clever one is. This is the crux of mystery. Know the strength of man, but keep a woman's care. Be the stream of the universe. Being the stream of the universe, ever true and unswerving, become as a little child once more. Know the white, but keep the black. Be an example to the world. Being an example to the world, ever true and unwavering. Return to the infinite. No honor yet keep humility. Be the valley of the universe. Being the valley of the universe, ever true and resourceful. Return to the state of the uncarved block. When the block is carved, it becomes useful. When the sage uses it, they become the ruler. Thus, a great tailor cuts little.
Do you think you can take over the universe and improve it? I do not believe it can be done. The universe is sacred. You cannot improve it. If you try to change it, you will ruin it. If you try to hold it, you will lose it. So sometimes things are ahead and sometimes they are behind. Sometimes breathing is hard. Sometimes it comes easily. Sometimes there is strength and sometimes weakness. Sometimes one is up and sometimes down. Therefore the sage avoids extremes, excesses and complacency. Whenever you advise a ruler in the way of Tao, counsel them not to use force to conquer the universe, for this would only cause resistance. Thorn bushes spring up wherever the army has passed. Lean years follow in the wake of a great war. Just do what needs to be done. Never take advantage of power. Achieve results, but never glory in them. Achieve results, but never boast. Achieve results, but never be proud. Achieve results, because this is the natural way. Achieve results, but not through violence. Force is followed by loss of strength. This is not the way of Tao. That which goes against the Tao comes to an early end.
good weapons are instruments of fear. All creatures hate them. Therefore, followers of Tao never use them. The wise person prefers the left. The person of war prefers the right. Weapons are instruments of fear. They are not a wise one's tools. One uses them only when they have no choice. Peace and quiet are dear to their heart. And victory, no cause for rejoicing. If you rejoice in victory, then you delight in killing. If you delight in killing, you cannot fulfill yourself. On happy occasions, precedence is given to the left. On sad occasions, to the right. In the army, the general stands on the left, the commander-in-chief on the right. This means that war is conducted like a funeral. When many people are being killed, they should be mourned in a heartfelt sorrow. That is why a victory must be observed like a funeral. The Tao is forever undefined. Small though it is in the unformed state, it cannot be grasped. If kings and lords could harness it, the 10,000 things would come together and gentle rain fall. People would need no more instructions and all things would take their course. Once the whole is divided, the parts need names. There are already enough names. One must know when to stop. Knowing when to stop averts trouble. Thou in the world is like a river flowing home to the sea.
Knowing others is wisdom. Knowing the self is enlightenment. Mastering others requires force. Mastering the self needs strength. One who knows they have enough is rich. Perseverance is a sign of willpower. One who stays where they are endures. To die but not to perish is to be eternally present. The great Tao flows everywhere, both to the left and to the right. The ten thousand things depend upon it. It holds nothing back. It fulfills its purpose silently and makes no claim. It nourishes the ten thousand things and yet is not their lord. It has no aim. It is very small. The ten thousand things return to it. Yet it is not their lord. It is very great. It does not show greatness and is therefore truly great. people will come to those who keep to the one, for there lies rest and happiness and peace. Passerbys may stop for music and good food, but a description of the Tao seems without substance or flavour. It cannot be seen, it cannot be heard, and yet it cannot be exhausted.
that which shrinks must first expand. That which fails must first be strong. That which is cast down must first be raised before receiving there must be giving this is called perception of the nature of things soft and weak overcome hard and strong fish cannot leave deep waters and a country's weapons should not be displayed. Tao abides in non-action, yet nothing is left undone. If kings and lords observed this, the 10,000 things would develop naturally. If they still desired to act, they would return to the simplicity of formless substance. Without form, there is no desire. Without desire, there is tranquility. And in this way, all things would be at peace. A truly good person is not aware of their goodness and is therefore good. A foolish one tries to be good and is therefore not good. A truly good person does nothing yet leaves nothing undone. A foolish one is always doing, yet much remains to be done. When a truly kind person does something, they leave nothing undone. When a just person does something, they leave a great deal to be done. 
When a disciplinarian does something and no one responds, they roll up their sleeves in an attempt to enforce order. Therefore, when Tao is lost, there is goodness. When goodness is lost, there is kindness. When kindness is lost, there is ritual. Now ritual is the husk of faith and loyalty, the beginning of confusion. Knowledge of the future is only a flowery trapping of Tao. It is the beginning of folly. Therefore, the truly great person dwells on what is real and not what is on the surface, on the fruit and not the flower. Therefore, accept the one and reject the other. These things from ancient times arise from one. The sky is whole and clear. The earth is whole and firm. The spirit is whole and strong. The valley is whole and full. The 10,000 things a whole and alive. Kings and lords are whole and the country is upright. All these are in virtue of wholeness. The clarity of the sky prevents its falling. The firmness of the earth prevents its splitting. The strength of the spirit prevents its being used up. The fullness of the valley prevents its running dry. The growth of the 10,000 things prevents their drying out. The leadership of kings and lords prevents the downfall of the country. Therefore, the humble is the root of the noble. The low is the foundation of the high. Princes and lords consider themselves orphaned, widowed, and worthless. Do they not depend on being humble? Too much success is not an advantage. Do not tinkle like jade or clatter like stone chimes.
returning is the motion of the Tao. Yielding is the way of the Tao. The 10,000 things are born of being. Being is born of not being. The wise student hears of the Tao and practices it diligently. The average student hears of the Tao and gives it thought now and again. The foolish student hears of the Tao and laughs aloud. If there were no laughter, the Tao would not be what it is. Hence it is said, the bright path seems dim, going forward seems like retreat, the easy way seems hard, the highest virtue seems empty, great purity seems sullied. The wealth of virtue seems inadequate. The strength of virtue seems frail. Real virtue seems unreal. The perfect square has no corners. Great talents ripen late. The highest notes are hard to hear. The greatest form has no shape. The Tao is hidden and without name. The Tao alone nourishes and brings everything to fulfillment.